There you go. Terrific. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, Friday, November 15th, 2024. Um, this is the November uh, meeting of the Western Board of Education Facilities, Finance and Operations uh, Committee. Uh, the first item on the agenda is an update of the facilities and ground maintenance. Mike, it's you got it. So, so right, you. Quick points. Um, mm -hmm. Campus wide, inside, outside, everything is looking pretty well. Um, we're in a pretty good place moving into uh, the change of the weather. All systems are operational. With any luck, all our chillers will be off, all our cooling will be done, and we'll move on to the heating side and be able to leave the cooling off for good till uh, May or so. Uh, a couple updates on projects. Uh, North House, we're still awaiting a, um, a climb feature to be delivered to be able to finish up the um, that second place gate, the club, the club one that's actually tighter to the swing set. So that's still ongoing. Front steps of the high school for the replacement. We had initial talks about possibly doing this complete replacement on Thanksgiving break. Couple calls yesterday. They don't believe the time is going to work in their favor with the amount of days that we have, and they don't want to be. Um, they don't want to put us out of an entrance for back to school on Monday. So now we're going to just going to reassess the weather as time goes. If winter break is above freezing, it'll be for the um, the holiday. Same with uh, winter break, and I hope it doesn't go as far as spring break, but it could go into April. There's nothing structurally wrong with the, the steps, so it's not a safety factor. It's just they had a couple of cracks that penetrated through the entire uh, the entire pour. So we had talked about a possible partial replacement that Phil and I disagreed with. Um, they're going to stand by the work. Apasso is the company that did the, the project. Uh, ideally, it'll be Christmas break. Um, if it's not Christmas break, it's probably going to have to wait till spring because winter break, the overnights are just too cold to pour concrete. And we don't want to put additive in there for antifreeze to cause issues. Um, the last update we had, the South House bathrooms. We had the two hallway bathrooms that still needed to be completed. They are soon completed about a week or two ago. Um, just have a small punch list to give to the contractor. And then that project will be all wrapped up. We have the um, the makeup air units for the East House and South House, also in the elementary school, that will be taking place. They wanted also to do Thanksgiving break, but that would mean we'd have to man the buildings, and it possibly would not have finished in time. So I put it off till Christmas break. So the makeup air units will be for that break time. That's all I have on our end. We have. Um, Adrian, the new hire that we had, our temporary one-year position. He's been a great addition to the team. Um, he's fit in well, picked the ball up running, and he's been here for a little over a month now. Everything's going great, great fit with the staff, hardworking, um, willing to do whatever overtime is needed to do what he needs for the building. So we're in good shape staff-wise. Um, that's all I have for you guys, unless you guys have questions on other things. Peter, Mike, Michael. I, I just have one quick one. Um, thanks, Mike. You covered basically everything I had. The only other question was the additional windows at the at the high school. I think they were on back order. Are they still on back order? Yeah, I haven't heard anything yet. Um, I will reach out and find out where we are with those last remaining windows. Um, and again, that's likely to be probably Christmas break when they're going to do those. Um, it's, they don't need a lift or anything, but it, I don't want to do it during school. But I'll find out where the um, where we are with the material. I just had one question. Okay. For Mike, um, were you able to complete the energy audit, or was that related to your I think you had a question with the energy audit. Uh, Phil yeah. and I have a call this afternoon. Well, I assume this meeting held at eleven o'clock this morning to go over some of the. Um, find points of it there was a little confusion we had a company in mind which is our building management service uh, company um the scope is a little bit far farther off from what they need so we're going to get a better understanding today 11 o'clock as to how to move forward we have a couple companies in mind that we're going to go forward with and we're just going to stay away from um, automated building sales services which is the company that we have for our building management system all right yeah i think ultimately I think the takeaway from all this is that 
what we're trying to determine is the scope of an Eversource audit, if that's in line with what our expectations are. Um, and if it's not, they may be an additional cost or a cost um, to provide us with the service that we are actually looking for for a complete energy audit. Let's take a little more time for us too. We have, if it was like the intermediate school and it was one building, one boiler plant, a couple of chillers on the roof, it'd be very simple. But when we start talking about the high school, we start talking about the middle school, start talking about the elementary school, we have additions that have been put on. Um, we have menagerie of heating, unit ventilators, air handlers, rooftops, uh, radiation. So it's just a, it's a broader, it's a huge scope that we want on our end. So we know where we're heading for the future as opposed to just the, the small, small details. We want soup to nuts. It for me. Okay, great. We want to move on to the uh, healthy building initiative. That you put okay, I'll, take, I'll take 30 seconds. You know, my mind one day I can stay here. So, uh, last Friday I spent the morning at the innovation center. No, I don't know if everyone, do we have a bad connection with Peter? Can you hear me? It's uh, not a great connection, Peter. Uh, okay. So, um, should I stay closer in mic or should I put on my earphones? How's uh, that? Is that better? That's better. Yeah. All right. So I'll just, you can see my nice head. Oh, so quick 15 seconds. I did do a tour uh, of the facility in North Haven, Connecticut. I'm a one man crusade. They do lots of great work in retrofitting all the power systems, building management systems, adding microgrids, battery storage, distribution schools not so many in connecticut now but mostly in massachusetts and new jersey so we'll just uh, keep that information until that one the day comes where mike needs to implement it so that's my my 15 second update for this session okay doke phil do you want to move the monthly financial update Yes, um, for the financial updates, uh, with the exceptions of the lines that we discussed last month, um, there are no other negative trending issues or concern at this point. Uh, do we want to talk about your meeting last night at this point? Um, we can. Um, I think it's a perfect fit. Uh, so last night, um, we had the Board of Finance. Um, we presented our first quarter first quarter financial report quarter end in September um, also on the agenda was a discussion regarding the non lapse in accounts um, I think I'll summarize it by saying the Board of Finance they're not of the opinion that we should exercise um, the right to establish a non lapse in account um, my words they do believe that the current process that we have in place where that if a special appropriation is needed, that we, if additional funds are needed, that we seek a special appropriation. Um, we did mention to them that we were in the early stages and <laughs> did want to have discussion with them in terms of just how that fund should be, should be established, how it should operate, um, but I, do not think that there is a general appetite on the board for the finance to establish this account. Okay, so just that for Peter and Michael, that's been the historic uh, uh, position of the board of finance. Certainly, when I was on it as well, um, that any surplus should be returned to the town, and if any unanticipated funds are required that we uh, go to the, uh, the the Board of Education goes to the Board of Finance for a special appropriation. Um, I, I can take both sides of that. Uh, if we if we choose to not return it, um, then we would anticipate that um, when we propose our budget for uh, this upcoming fiscal year that they'll you know they would say okay you want x but it's going to be x minus whatever we have uh in the non-lapsing account and that would be the kind of the simplistic way i would 
Yeah, I would anticipate that occurring. Um, but we do know, at least now, that we have some uh, upcoming expenditures, unanticipated expenditures uh, for uh, enhancing school security that have come up in the last, you know, couple, three months um, that Phil and Mike and others are implementing. So it's uh, enhanced panic buttons, if that's the right terminology. It's it's door locks. Um, uh, those are the two that, you know, I, that I know are most prominent. Um, we're still uh, attempting to find uh, a bulletproof uh, glass um, for, uh, for the guards uh, at a rational price. Um, there are, I don't know, Mike, Phil, radios or, you know, things that we are doing today that we didn't anticipate when we put this budget together, uh, you know, almost a year ago now. And so I would be in favor of telling the Board of Finance um, we have unanticipated expenditures for, for safety uh, that we currently have the funds for that we couldn't budget for uh, because they've come up as of late and we would uh, we will we would like to withhold whatever that number is and I think the number is in round numbers, a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, and return the balance. Alternatively, if they would like to determine the safety of our schools by telling us what we can spend or not spend, you know, let them make that decision. Because that's essentially, safety is turning out to be, <coughs> uh, safety is turning out to be not too dissimilar, in my mind, not too dissimilar to special education. Uh, Things come up uh, that are unanticipated. Uh, the community wants enhanced safety, you know, and it seems no matter how much you do, that isn't enough. Um, and, the, and the technology changes. And as much as we'd like to plan for that, it's difficult. So that's my initial thoughts. I don't, Michael, Peter, I don't know how you feel about that. And, and then ultimately this decision is a board decision. It's not just the three of us. You gotta, you gotta lean into it, Peter. Oh, here's my forehead again. Michael, do you want to go first, or, or should I just? Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. can go ahead. You can go ahead, Peter. Peter, we're having a difficult time hearing you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Let me go. Uh, let Michael talk. Okay. Um, so I guess so is it is it then your um your opinion steve that um in order to make sure that we are basically um getting along here and that you know to not make this process uh just painful going forward that we not establish the account is that is, is that your thinking That's my thinking, because they'll they'll do. I, the the majority, you know, Phil, you were at the meeting. I wasn't there. I mean, I think, I think the majority of the board uh, would. Well, I think it's split down party lines. Um, uh, although I wasn't at the meeting, but I do, you know, I do feel that um, that they would like, you know, they would they would like the money returned. Hey. They, they they want to control the expenditures. Here's a question for you, Steve. Has it has there ever been a time in the past, and you would know this, I, I obviously wouldn't, but have there been times in the past where the Board of Ed has requested funds and the Board of Finance has not has has rejected that that request? Well, not, not, not that I can remember. Can you not, remember, Phil? Okay. 
No, I don't think that there, there's there's been a time. Um, so since since I've been here, there there hasn't been a need for a special appropriation. I think the year prior to me coming here, there was a significant um, ask from the Board of um, Finance for over a million dollars or something like that for um, special education related costs. Yeah. yeah. And what, what happened in that in that case, Phil? Do you know? It, it, it was approved. It was, it approved. was approved. Yeah. It was approved. But procedurally here, there's a limit to there's a limit to how there's a limit statutory limit to special appropriations as a percentage of the budget or right. overall budget. So, I mean, we can have the conversation with them that we're going to ask for. I'm making the number up, $200,000 for incremental security. The money's there. Yeah. We know we're going to ask for it. We'll give you back the balance. Uh, but, but why eat into this special appropriation bucket if you don't have to since the money's already there? Right, right. I mean, practically, and, that's what they should do. Right. And, and to that point, I think for the past two three years they have been very close the town has been very close to that ceiling um so if we ever have a bad year you know and they continue to to really abut that um ceiling then it's going to need a special um a special vote by the town correct steve i think by yeah time. then you have to go to a town meeting yep and there was indications last night that if we should establish this account, that it will become contentious. Well, it's always been contentious, right? And why? And, and Steve, Steve, just just spell it out for me, like I'm a kindergarten. Like, why? Why is that? Why? Why are they so against? Why do they want? Why are they so adamant that we turn over the money and then come to them for? Why is that? Because they because they're doing what they should do. They're the board of finance, and they control town spending. And you know they allocated money to us to the board of educator. They didn't, but yeah, know, the town right. did. And we we didn't spend it all. So give it back to us, and we'll determine, you know, how monies are to be spent. I mean, it's not an irrational, right? Their part, right? Um, but when we when we hand that money back to them, they can spend it in in, in whatever in whatever in, in whatever way they choose, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be education. No, it goes back to the it goes back to the general fund. Yeah, right. It goes I'm, back to the I'm mixed. Fund. I'm mixed. I have to say, I I don't I don't I have to think through sort of fully pros and cons of this. I don't want to create a contentious situation, and it buys us really nothing. On the on the other hand. Um, you know, it would be nice, obviously, for us to not have to go back to them every time. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm mixed. I'm mixed. I don't know. No, I'm in. I'm in the same place as you. Um, no. I'm. I'm mixed. But we do have the money. We do need the money for, in this case for safety. So, right. we'll ha so it, with full disclosure, we'll say to them, "Here's what we need for safety. We we're gonna. We'll come to you. We, if we give you the money back, we're." we're same day we give you the money back, we're going to ask for two hundred thousand dollars back. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. a little bit better. Yep. Right, right. So th th it's it. This is a good seesaw discussion, right? Like it, it's which which side of the seesaw is ultimately going to going to win out. And I'm more in favor of having Phil and Mike act expeditiously, like they know that these. Security expenditures, you can strike while the iron's height, hot, right? You can go buy something now and do what you got to do. So if it's simply procedural paperwork and acting expeditiously, knowing that these are forthcoming, one would say let them have the latitude and, and flexibility to move when they need to move rather than going through a little bit of control mechanisms. That would be that would be the case for setting up the account and being able to move move expeditiously so two quick questions i have here uh number one if we don't set it up today it doesn't necessarily we, we don't forego our the option of setting it up in the future right phil if we decided that would be correct um but just to add a little <laughs> the board of finance in general 
not they do not want that account to be established full stop right. yeah no, i understand yeah um and then and then i guess the other question is and and i don't know all the wrinkles to this and phil and steve you guys would know this better than i but um are there any are there any concessions that we can that we can get out of this quote unquote negotiation that would that would make it easier for <laughs> us in the future I, I don't know. It's, is it, you know, is it percentages? Is it the process? Is it, is, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how this, how this really works being new to this, but um, anything else that you guys can think of that if we don't, if we don't establish the account fine, but we're looking for X, Y, and Z going forward. We, I think we sort of kind of attempted that last night. Okay. Um, it didn't go over to, uh, very well. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I mean, we, we can. It's an it's an interesting thought. I mean, we could have the conversation and say, uh, if we run a surplus, um, you know, we'll give you back some percentage of it. But we'd like to withhold, you know, you know, twenty percent of it for unforeseen things. We, but I don't. We can have that conversation. I, I think we know where it's going to go, Phil. But yeah, but I just think we go through the budget process. If we don't give it back to them, uh, they're just going to subtract it from the upcoming budget, and they're going to say you already have the money. So why why are you why are you asking for it twice? Right. Um, I guess is there anything on the you know concession wise, just on the process or the decision making, or no. uh, I, I don't I don't know I don't know. Okay. Um, because the alternative of course is, Hey, look, we just established the fund and, and not, not, I don't want to be argumentative again for the sake of it, but if this can help us in, um, in easing the process for us or giving us more flexibility going forward, even if we don't establish the fund, then why not do that? Cause this is the only opportunity we would, we'd probably have to do that. So just a thought. Peter, you have any thoughts? Uh, I like having let, letting Phil and Mike have flexibility in rea in lowering reaction time. I mean, it's it's clear that uh, that security is paramount, and if they could act fast and do what they need to do, and that's a benefit for the school district and for the town. So I don't know why it's so painful to let to give them some flexibility. Right, there's a difference, Peter. I think too in. And and Steve, you mentioned this before too. In this one a one time event, which is hey, this one time we have these unanticipated expenditures. So you know, you know, in this one instance, we're going to hand you back X, but we're going to request Y right away, or or we're going to withhold it, whatever have you. So there's a difference between sort of a one time concession and then sort of ongoing going forward. This is this is what we would prefer to have the process or this is what we prefer to have in terms of our withholding. Um, so anyway, again, just the thought, I don't want to be. No, no, no. It's, you know, it's a good, it's, it's a good, I, 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 I think that discussion about having a concession that if we were to run a surplus, we can keep up to a certain amount of money or up to a certain percentage. I think it's probably money versus a percentage. Um, or, or a process or procedure or uh, I, yeah. I, I, again, if you look at, let's say money, let's say process, procedure, et cetera, decision making, whatever have you, um, what are the potential items that are up for concession that, that we can negotiate? And, you know, if you came up, Steve, and, and, you know, you would probably be the one to do this, you and or Phil say, hey, these are the three things under money. These are the two or three things under procedure, whatever. And look, we come to the conclusion that they're not going to budge in any of this stuff. Okay. Then we have a decision to make and uh, to not be contentious for contentious sake. Maybe we say we don't establish the fund, but um, it would be good to know sort of, or at least to discuss with the board um, what the art of the possible here um, as we think about the next step. So would it be, uh, would it be good if I have a conversation with Mike Ember? 
I think that, that's a start. Um, okay. But I think we have to discuss it. They're waiting on just in terms of a, from a timeline perspective. So a decision ultimately has to be made before the cap report is issued, and that's um, December thirty first. I think we should be receiving a draft uh, financial statement soon. Okay. Um, so we need to know that in terms of ultimately what the all unassigned fund balance will be. Um, okay. So let me let me. Um you know, let me open that dialogue and I'll come back to everybody. But um, so that means we don't have to make this decision until uh, our December meeting. No, we need to make a decision um, probably, probably before our board are at the latest our board meeting in, um, in December. Um, so that in information can be conveyed to the auditors. But from a process, from a time and perspective, we can, if we make a decision on Monday, we can have, we can share that information with the Board of Finance with their regularly scheduled meeting in December. And then that information can be conveyed to the auditors. So I should have a conversation with Mike Amber before Monday? Uh, yes, ideally, yes. Okay, I'll do that. All righty. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Uh, no. Anything else, uh, Phil? On the non-lapsing account, no, but there's some other items on the agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the encumbrance report? Yeah. Um, typically what we do, if, if we have any um, encumbrances from previous years that we have not fully liquidated, um, we have historically released that. So this is just a report just saying that we're releasing $163,000 from fiscal 22-23. There's no question, I think, regarding this this particular amount, because uh, this was pre legislation change, this amount will be returned to the town. Um, okay. Next item up, um, which is a, a biggie, um, is claims. So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up um, similar to, to the highlights that we gave for the trend in um, negative issues. Um, our deficits um, on the financial statements is um, health health insurance claims. So you'll see from the report that um, for the trailing 12 months of fiscal 25, our claims, we have had significant claims. Um, our current claims experience or our current loss ratio is 130%. Um, it doesn't affect us in fiscal year 25. Um, because we're, we have a fully funded plan, um, so we're only paying the premium as, as outlined. The concern that we have in, is really for fiscal 26. So year to date and also from the period ending October 31st, we continue to see high claims. I had some initial conversations with Brown and Brown, our um, insurance consultant, and they're saying based on these, um, based on the current loss ratio, they do not anticipate that we will see any any low um, increases for next next fiscal year, we're pretty much looking at a double-digit increase, and the range is going to be anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five percent, which is significant. Is that is that? And you told me this before. Is that consistent with what's going on generally? It, you know, away from us. I mean, have you? Yeah, there, 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 there are a few other districts. I mean, every district is different, right? Because everything is just based on the health of the employees. Um, so it's a little bit diff, diff, um, difficult to determine that. But I think broadly speaking, um, everyone is seeing an increase in, um, in, in their claims experience. You know, we had a lull. Everyone had a lull during those COVID years. But since then, it has, it has ticked up. And historically speaking, you may, you typically will have a few years where you'll have low claims experience but you will have a few years where that will just stick up. And it's just it's just that cycle. And it's just unfortunate that right now um, we're at the high level or in that we're experiencing those high claims. Um, and it's just it's just unfortunate. We were favorable um, two years ago when we went out um, for an RFP. Um, so again, I, I do not know because we haven't gotten official official indication from um, Signal in terms of where they anticipate that the renewals will be, but I think it was just important to flag this now as we enter um, our budget um, budget season. And and had we not chosen to leave the state fund, it wouldn't be appreciably different. 
Jim? Um, it would not be appreciably different, but what we would have seen, we'd have probably probably seen um, that steady increase. We did save some money by going by coming off off the state insurance plan. Yeah. Um, the, the claims right now for the state partnership plan are about eighteen to twenty cents to twenty percent higher than what our current pre premiums are. So, in terms of our our plan is structured, um, we cannot trigger the the units or the board of education cannot trigger a reopener, so to speak, until we have something that will say that we are disproportionately higher um, in terms of our claims experience and renewal. I'm sorry, rate renewals. So, once we have the rate renewals, then we can maybe start a reopener with a union to possibly exit. And um, do an RFP to see if we can have more favorable, assuming that student will be high, more favorable um, renewal rates. But th there are only how many bidders? Two? Two to three, yes. Right. So the option, the, our option will be to go with a product provider, um, the Cigna, the United, um, the Kinetic, um, Kinetic, Kinetic, I forgot the other one, is a third. Or go back to the state partnership plan. Okay. Um, just to give you a sense of where we are with the three bids that we have, they weren't really that far apart when we did RFP um, two years ago. They're we're really close. I think the difference um, coming with Cigna was that we had a second year um, guarantee, uh, second year rate lock. Okay. So again, this is just more so for information, just to kind of give an indication in terms of what we are seeing or what we can expect um, going into budget season. Okay. Well. So Phil, what you're saying is, you know, as I look at this at this table that you put together, um, the premium for this year for fiscal year 24 was 7.5, right? Mm -hmm. um, are you so are you suggesting that there's a 25 to 30 percent increase coming up off that number okay. Correct. okay and then and then when we open this up let's say for bid let's say next year mm -hmm. the question is do we stick with the high deductible and i guess under high deductible you can have two or three bidders or do you go to the state you go back to the spp mm -hmm. and they're going to give us you know what i mean what, what, I, I don't know how that works, but I assume that that's sort of one plan and this is, they're going to quote us a premium. Yes. So it's one plan for the entire state. Okay. Um, with the exception that for Fairfield County, there's normally, God, I forgot the, I forgot the exact term, but it's a, there's a differential. So in addition to the base rate, yeah. municipality within Fairfield County will pay a percentage or two have more than what the other, the other um, counties are paying. So this is going to be relevant. This is going to come up in our in our budget discussions in January, correct? It most definitely will. Okay. All right. Thanks, Phil. All right. On that good news. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. I guess the last item, unless there's other things to talk about it's just to approve the minutes from our last meeting any changes no nope. okay can we have a motion to approve i move to approve the minutes from our last meeting okay no. okay second second all those in favor Aye. i'll let you know when i speak to mike i was just sending him a note as we were as we were talking thanks everybody all right thank you thanks, thanks, okay, thanks, thanks guys. everyone bye guys thanks Phil.